Hey everybody, I'm Jacob Castro and welcome to another live stream here on Jacob's Aquarium. So today is a really um, nice, I couldn't think of a better word, nice live stream uh, because I'll be unboxing my new camera that I just got today actually. I just got home and saw there was a package in front of my door and I'm like, oh yes, it's here finally. Which by the way, I'm home early today because uh, it's been raining so bad over here in California, which I know compared to the rest of the country is nothing to complain about, but it's been, it's been raining so bad and Californians do not like to go out and shop in the rain. So being that I'm a nursery uh, and everything is outside, I was not getting any business today. So I'm like, okay, closing it down, going home early. So came home early and I discovered this little baby in front of my door. And I'm so excited to unbox it. Now, uh, for those of you that don't know, um, I ordered the Sony Action Camera because the GoPro that I got, the GoPro Hero 5 Black, uh, did not live up to my expectations. And um, I, I talked more about that in the previous stream. So uh, if you want to know why I didn't like the GoPro and you know what was wrong with it, in my opinion, uh, watch the previous live stream. So I returned the GoPro and instead got the Sony action camera. So let's go ahead and unbox it Out of the shipping box Ew, sticky I hate sticky stuff like whenever I just I hate sticky stuff. So the tape ugh, Gross hate it. I Don't like the sticky stuff. The sticky stuff is not good. Not good. Not good. Okay, um, all right, Ganesha, let's move you over here. You're, you're in the way, unfortunately. Sorry about that, sweetheart. Okay, so uh, this is the camera that I ordered. Um, as you can see, it's uh, made very well. Um, I believe this is it has a 12 megapixel sensor, and uh, you can film underwater with this camera as well. So this is this is an awesome camera, isn't it? <laughs> okay, here's the camera right here. Sony action camera, yeah, yeah. So that's all that was in there. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Um, that's the shipping box. Gone. And today, actually, I went to a uh, Best Buy and I bought the uh, suction cup mount as well for filming stuff in the car. Um, or if I'm at a fish store filming a video, I can suction cup the camera to. Um, uh, to a uh, fish tank or whatever and film something so yeah all right let's unbox the camera now i love getting new technology in the mail Ooh, look at that Ooh, i get i get chills when i unbox technology i love it i love technology okay um so two boxes this one comes out first obviously oh don't break on me no oh, oh my god i'm gonna drop everything okay so we got a uh, mount here for something that I have no idea what it's for. Uh, we got a USB cable. That's nice. And that's not USB-C so, or whatever they call that new USB connector, which thank God that's not it because I would hate to be limited to only that since that's not so popular right now. And then we got a lot of uh, manuals and uh, we got a sticker, a sticker that says Sony Action Camera. Very good. And then we got the manual right here, and another manual, and another manual, and then a box right here. Okay. All right. Um, so let's. All these papers everywhere. Jesus. How many papers do they have to include with the camera? It's like, ah, you film stuff with it. How much more do I need to know about it? Jeez. Okay. Um. I'm gonna save that though. I'm not throwing that away in case I have to return this one, which I don't think I will, but I'll save it. <gasps> there it is, the camera. Oh my god. I don't know why I'm whispering. <laughs> okay. Ooh, ooh, whoa, it's heavy. Hmm. Always a good sign, I think. If, if technology is heavy, that means it's it's good. It's good, right? I think so. Yeah. Um, oh, oh baby, 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 look at that. Mm-mm. -mm. Mm, 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 mm. That is actually really sexy looking. I love that. So, ooh, it's cold too. Are you cold, sweetheart? 
You've been out in the rain all night. Sorry about that. Actually, all day. <laughs> uh, what are these buttons for? Oh, that's... Okay. It's actually... I think there's a little condensation built up on the plastic here. Man. I hope... Uh, I hope it didn't get wet inside. That's weird. All right. Let's go ahead and take the camera out. And uh, how the freaking hell do you do this? Some, some, some way, somehow. Oh, I remember. Okay. You break it. That's how you get it out. Lord, help me, Jesus. How do you get this camera out of this freaking thing? Oh, my God. I'm going to break this thing, and I'm going to be so mad. Okay. Open. There's an arrow. Okay. I am pushing. Oh. Haha. <laughs> That's how you do it. Okay. So, take this out. Oh, yes. A little wobbly. Okay. Take the camera out. Ooh, Zeiss lens. Nice. Very nice. Put that right there. Try not to scratch the front. And here is the actual camera. Look how tiny that thing is. Sony 4K. Very, very beautiful. Smash it. Okay. Arrgh! No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, $400 down the drain right there. Um, yeah, by the way, the, the Sony action camera was $399.99. The same price as the GoPro Hero 5 Black. So... Uh, that's one of the main, one of the main reasons why I switched it. This is so weird. There's like condensation, like water built up on the outside of this thing. Why? That is so weird. Is it just because it was cold and rainy outside? But I don't understand it. It was. It's been inside the packaging. Oh my God! There's some built up inside too. What the? What in the world? Is it? just humid in my room or something what what is going on here jeez that is very strange i've never experienced that before okay uh so here's the camera i'm going to be very delicate with it because do not want to break that thing that's four hundred dollars that's a lot of money a lot of money honey you got to spend too much money on the camera okay so let's flip this little door out put the Frickin' battery in. How the frickin'... Ah. Oh, there we go. Okay. I get frustrated easily. Just bear with me, guys. <laughs> okay, put the battery in. Right here. Put the battery in right here. There we go. Okay. I think that's in. Yes. Yes, sir. Oh, that's really nice. There's actually a rubber O-ring around the uh, the uh, door to the battery so uh, supposedly this camera is splash proof not fully waterproof without the housing but splash proof so that's nice I like that that extra layer of protection so okay battery is in um, uh, there's no screen on the camera so I can't actually see what it's filming um, so I guess I have to connect it to my phone and that's gonna take another 10 years to try to figure out so I think we will save that for later. But anyways, this is my new camera, the Sony Action Camera. And uh, this is the camera that I'm going to be using to make all my underwater videos at the uh, uh, the nursery from now on. We'll just put that back in there so the lens does not get scratched. And I will try to close this again. Okay, that's how you do it. Very good. And it's closed. We're closed. We're good. Okay, there it is. All right, um, and actually, <laughs> this is kind of cool. They gave me a sticker, Sony Action Camera. I actually put the GoPro sticker on my computer already when I got the camera in the mail. So it looks like I'll be uh, putting that sticker over that one. So, um, okay, maybe I should talk a little bit about the camera and why I chose to um, switch to this. Um, and if you guys have any questions, uh, just uh, let me know. Jacob, I just tuned in. Can you start over so I don't miss anything? <laughs> okay, let me uh, let me put all this stuff back in the box. Okay, uh, let me repackage the camera, the manuals, and uh, I will do this all over again just for you. Okay, okay. Just give me uh, maybe a couple hours. Okay. <laughs> I hope you were joking. <laughs> I really hope you were joking. Okay, so. Um, the main reason why I switched to the Sony, Sony action camera rather than uh, sticking with my GoPro Hero 5 Black was because 
Uh, this camera has optical image stabilization. The GoPro did not. It had uh, a software internal based image stabilization. Um, it was not optical. If you don't know what optical Im image stabilization is, Google it. I'm not going to explain that right now. Hell no. Uh, too much to talk about. Um, so the video is going to be really smooth whenever I film with this camera. And the audio quality is so much better with this. The microphone on the GoPro Hero 5 Black was just terrible. It sounded like crap, for lack of a better word. Um, I've seen so many videos filmed with this camera and the microphone on this camera is much better and the audio quality is so much more better. So I switched to this camera for those two reasons, uh, mainly because the image stabilization, the better audio, and uh, you know, a little bit also because the video quality itself. Um, out of all the reviews that I watched, for, uh, you know, comparing the GoPro Hero 5 Black to the Sony action camera, it just seemed like the Sony had uh, just better quality video. It looked, uh, I mean, they both look sharp. You know, GoPro has a really nice, you know, sharp quality video to it. Uh, but the color, the color looks so much better on the uh, Sony action camera, which, you know, that could possibly be because of the white balance setting, exposure, and all that crap. But... Um, you know, being that I've been using cameras for as long as I can remember, um, I know that it still has to do with, you know, the internals of the camera. That's why the colors look like the way they are. Uh, white balance and exposure, yeah, it has a little bit to do with it, but it's not everything. It's the, the sensor that's in the camera as well. So, and, you know, like I keep saying, this camera was the same price as the GoPro. So, it's like, if you can get much better features at the same price point why not you know <laughs> i think gopro um, made a huge mistake uh, releasing a new camera um, that was pretty much the same as the previous model <laughs> besides that it already was built to uh you know um, it was already built waterproof so you didn't have to even have a housing for that camera you can just throw it in um, uh, versus you know this one you have to use a housing with it but, I mean, there really wasn't too much that was changed on the new GoPro. So, I don't understand what they were thinking. And uh, I, I, I don't know how they thought that that was, um, that was going to be a successful camera. Uh, it, I actually feel kind of bad for GoPro because, I mean, they, they have a big fan base. But from what I've been seeing and, what, and the things I've been reading on the internet, uh, a lot of people are returning their GoPros for the Sony Action Camera. Because uh, they just, you know, just like I've been saying... Uh, more features, same price point, why not, you know, so, um, uh, yeah, so I'm going to, uh, I don't know why I put it back in the, the, uh, waterproof housing, I gotta, I gotta put the memory card in too, <laughs> so, uh, this camera takes, uh, SD, XC, CCCC, blah, 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 uh, miniature cards, where the hell do I put it in, I think it's right here, where the battery is, no, it's not. Okay. All right. And if you guys have any questions now, I will uh, start answering them because we're pretty much done with the unboxing. So, GoPro took a huge step backward. Yes, they did. I completely agree with you. Uh, do you still have a tank at home? No, I do not. But I. Oh, there it is. Micro SD. Okay. I don't have a tank at home, but um, I really am wanting one. <laughs> so, uh, I will probably be oh you know what i have pictures on here crap okay well that's gonna have to wait i have pictures that i have to transfer to my computer so we'll do that later though uh this is a god these things are so tiny Ugh. this is a 64 gigabyte uh micro sd card and it's so cool uh lexar actually gives you a little uh, usb uh reader for the card too for free with the card so that's nice um, but yeah, that's the Sony action camera. Uh, let's go ahead and take out the um, uh, suction cup thing. I just got this today from Best Buy. Um, oh, there are my scissors. So this is pretty cool. Actually, I just I just realized this. <laughs> I have the Canon 70D now to film videos with, and that's for obviously above ground stuff. And now I have the Sony action camera. So I have two cameras now. Yay! That gives me so much flexibility. Except this one films in 4K. The 70D does not. So, 
Um, that's a huge disappointment. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I love my 70D actually. Um, my 70D has served me well for um, a long time now. So here's the suction cup mount. And ooh, it's wow, a lot of this stuff is heavy. That's nice. The camera's heavy. The accessories are heavy. They must be good. Okay. Bye bye. Um, oh, sorry. I've been neglecting the chat. Uh, are you going to return your GoPro? Yes, I already did. I returned it already. Uh, do aquarium plants need to be kept at a certain temperature? Um, yeah, you know, I usually recommend that they be kept at any anywhere between 70 and 75 degrees. Uh, they're, they're sensitive to really warm temperatures. So if you, if you have plants in a tank that's like 80, 85 degrees, that's a little risky. They can start to melt. So I typically recommend you stay around um, uh, 70 to 75 degrees. So, man, this thing is like made out of metal and really hard plastic. This is nice. Wow. Okay. High quality. High quality, bro. Alright, we'll suction cup this right here. How about that? Press to suction. Okay. Ah, how do you secure it? Oh my goodness. Damn, that's strong. Wow. I could probably pick up my whole desk with this thing. <laughs> okay. Uh, questions, questions, questions. What's up, man? I've been following you since your first goldfish tank. Wow, that's a long time. Thank you, Dustin, for uh, Dustin Walker. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Uh, hey, Jacob, would you explain where the name German Blue Ram comes from? I live there, and I have no idea why it's called that. I, I, I don't know. I'm sorry. Um, how many people have 4K TVs? I can't tell the difference. I actually don't have a 4K TV, but I've seen plenty of them at uh, my, my local Best Buy. Which is a uh, electronic, electronic store. How do you put this in here? Oh my gosh, I'm gonna break it. Um, I've seen plenty of them at my local electronic store, and uh, I think I can turn it. Oh yes, I can. Okay, I've seen plenty of them at my local electronic store, and uh, the difference is is very noticeable. I mean, you can definitely tell. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't want to break this thing. Okay, let's tighten that up. Put that right there. Yes, sir, yes, sir. It still moves a little bit. Huh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Can't watch me break this freaking thing. Okay, there we go. So we'll we'll leave that right here. Look at we'll pose it like this. Sony action camera. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, we'll close this so nothing builds up inside. Ah, shit. Don't be complicated on me now. Come on. There we go. Okay. All right. So there you have it. Sony action camera. Uh, hey, hi, Jacob. Would you... Oh, I already answered that one. <laughs> hey, what's up, Jacob? Do you have any tips for someone who just started a low-tech planet tank? Um... Tips for a low-tech planet tank, um, I would say, jeez, oh, I would say, sorry, got some in my eye. <laughs> for a low-tech planet tank, I assume that means you're simply relying on low light, um, not, well, okay, see, that's a tough one. Tell me what you're using in your tank first, and that'll help me. <laughs> My Best Buy clearly sucks, Jacob. Aw. You know what? Actually, my the first Best Buy that I um, I tried to get something from today um, really sucked as well. Because <laughs> I did a, a pickup thing where I ordered it online and chose to pick it up in the store. And they told me the thing that I wanted was available, which actually the thing I wanted was the suction cup mount. Um, but then I received an email from them today, uh, telling me, oh yeah, um, we had a inventory mistake or the item wasn't available. Sorry. So you have to go find it somewhere else. Basically that's what the email said. And I was like, wow. Okay. But they already charged me. So I'm getting charged for something I don't have. Uh, thankfully though, another Best Buy in the area, 
uh, had it, so I was able to get the suction cup mount today. Um, but it sucked because I had to drive pretty far, and it's raining. It's raining pretty bad over here, so it was really scary driving in the rain. Which not just raining like you know, little sprinkles. It was pouring, and on the freeway, driving like that with all the spray and mist from all the cars and everything, the visibility was like non-existent. It was uh, pretty scary. So what is this for? I that's something I, I I'll have to figure out. <laughs> this was in the package with the suction cup mount. I have no idea what this is for though. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know. Okay. Is that the new Sony camera? Yep. This is the new Sony action camera. The one that will the one that has replaced my GoPro. And man, this suction cup mount is really nice. I think this is actually better than the GoPro suction cup mount. Jeez, it's made out of metal. It's just like freaking strong. I can't even lift this up. Man. That's nice. I can't wait to mount this in my car and start making videos. That's gonna be fun. Uh, Jacob, any idea when you will have more Jungle Val available? How frequently do you restock, update inventory on your site so I can make sure to keep an eye out? Um, yeah, I, uh, I'm getting a shipment, um, this Saturday, so, um, I have to go pick up my, my shipment, actually, from the airport, because I have my, my stuff shipped in on, uh, Southwest Airlines, which is pretty cool. <laughs> it's actually much cheaper than having it shipped through FedEx or UPS. Um, so I have to go pick them up, uh, from the airport on a Saturday. So I should get back home maybe around noon and I'll update the website to show the plants that are in stock uh, because of my new shipment. So I'm guessing probably the website should show what I have in stock, um, on Saturday around maybe 2 or 3 p.m. Uh, Pacific time, okay? So if you check back on the website around that time, uh, pretty much all the plants that are, let's say they're out of stock now, they should be back in stock and, and, uh, and ready for you, okay? So um, Saturday, <clears throat> this coming Saturday around 2 or 3 p.m. Th th uh, through that time frame. <laughs> what is the biggest mistake you've made as an aquarium keeper? <laughs> um, Thanks, dude, for the detailed answer, man. You're welcome, Forrest. Thank you so much for uh, for choosing Jacob's Aquarium for your aquatic plant needs. I really appreciate it. Um, the biggest mistake that I've made as an aquarium keeper, I remember one time I was doing a water change, and uh, <laughs> it was like the dumbest mistake that you can make. And uh, I was using a five-gallon bucket to uh, siphon uh, the water out of my tank, you know, because I was using a gravel vacuum at the time. I I, I think I was, I think I had a goldfish tank at the time. Um, so I had the five gallon bucket set up, the gravel vacuum set up in the tank. And I was just doing my thing, siphoning the gravel, getting the tank all nice and clean. And I did not keep an eye on the five gallon bucket. And I did not realize that it was filling up and filling up and filling up. And I wasn't watching <laughs> so I could stop the flow of water um, so that it didn't overflow onto the floor. Uh, so I just kept, you know, just kept siphoning and si si siphoning, yeah, siphoning, siphoning water. And eventually I heard a splashing sound and I looked and I'm like, no. <laughs> and I had carpet at the time too. So it soaked the carpet so badly and it was dirty goldfish tank fish water. So it made the carpet stink really bad. I had to hire a... Uh, professional carpet cleaning company to come out and uh, clean the, that area in the carpet and everything. It costs a fair bit amount of money to just for that little section to be cleaned. Um, and I was like, oh my God, how, st how st stupid am I? You know, like I, <laughs> I could not believe I did that. So from that point on, I was like, okay, you know what? I don't trust myself to use five gallon buckets for my water changes. I am going to instead buy a really freaking long hose <laughs> and put that hose into a bathtub or the, a sink or something so that any water coming out of my tank goes directly down the drain. I don't have to worry about a five gallon bucket because I am obviously, I, I get too sidetracked too easily to concentrate and you know remember that I have water siphoning out into a bucket and it could pit, potentially overflow and flood my house. So 
<laughs> I think that is probably one of the biggest mistakes I've made. Um, I think um, one of the more sadder, sad mistakes that I've made was when I was, when I like first, really first got into the hobby. I think I was, um, I think I was 12 or 13 at the time and I had a 30 gallon tank and I really, really wanted a Tiger Oscar because I, I, a couple of my friends had Tiger Oscars and I was just so like, man, they're like su such cool fish. So I wanted one um, and I had a 30 gallon tank. So I, I'm sure you guys can already understand that a 30 gallon tank, Tiger Oscar that can get to a foot and a half long. Yeah, that doesn't, shouldn't do that. Um, so I had that fish. I bought a Tiger Oscar for my 30 gallon tank. The tank was not established at all because I knew nothing about you know, biological bacteria, cycling a tank. All I knew was, hey, you can you can have a fish tank. You can fill it with water and put fish in it. That's that's pretty much all I knew at the time. Um, and so I bought a Tiger Oscar from uh, PetSmart, <laughs> coincidentally, and um, I put the fish in there, and it survived for a very very long time, probably at least two years, and it grew very very big, um, but. It eventually grew so big that I it like outgrew the tank. You know, it was so huge for this 30 gallon tank, um, and so <laughs> and so really really sad. Um, I I don't know what happened, but somehow some way it just died, and I don't know why it died. It just died. You know. Um, I'm assuming it died because it was just so big for the tank that it was in and maybe, uh, you know, stuff built up like, you know, the water parameters got all out of whack because of the amount of waste the fish was producing compared to the tank. And, you know, on this tank, I had a little tiny, a little tiny filter. It wasn't even anything appropriate for the aquarium. So, um, the fish died. I was so, so upset because I really, really loved, loved that fish, but obviously it was a mistake that I made because I didn't do my research, but I was like 12 years old at the time, you know, so I, I knew nothing about anything about the aquarium hobby. Um, pretty much from when I first started, like when I first got my first aquarium up until I was 12 years old, I was just filling tanks with water and putting stuff in it. I knew nothing about it. Um, so that was the biggest mistake. I, I think the saddest biggest mistake that I've ever, ever made because I was so upset that I lost that fish. Um, but it was a mistake because I could have done the research if I knew, if I knew more about, you know, stuff like that, I would have done the research, but I didn't. So, and the fish died. So yeah, pretty sad, but that was probably the biggest mistake that I made. So, uh, they have tiger Oscars at PetSmart. Yes, they do. And I still think they do. <laughs> That's where I bought it. I bought it at PetSmart. I believe it was it was fifteen ninety nine for a tiger oscar i think yeah jacob is there any plants i can use without co2 my 30 gallon absolutely yeah there are a lot of plants guys that you can grow in a tank without co2 uh low light um you know very very low demanding plants uh wisteria is a great fast growing easy to grow plant uh, luguigia repens <laughs> i still can't pronounce that plant um, uh, what's the other one? Um, mm, trying to think what the name is. It's, it's, it's Indian lace fern or something like that. Uh, oh, water sprite. I think that's the common name. Yeah. Water sprite, really easy to grow. Grows definitely without CO2. Um, hmm, 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 hmm. moss. A lot of mosses grow great without CO2. Mm. Uh, anacris. I can't not mention anacris. <laughs> that plant is like a weed. Grows in anything. Uh, you know, there's there, there's a lot of plants. But off the top of my head, that's pretty much all I could think about. Um, so, yeah. Those plants. I recommend those. How do I get rid of Malaysian trumpet snails from my aquarium? Uh, you know, there's really no way you can get rid of snails entirely from your aquarium. Uh, what you can do is just pretty much control their populations. 
what I've heard people do to control snails in their aquarium is they'll get like a plastic cup and uh, they'll put like a, a slice of an orange or a slice of a zucchini or something, some type of fruit or vegetable <laughs> pretty much. And uh, they'll put it in the plastic cup and then they'll put that, you know, the cup and everything in their aquarium, you know, underwater and they'll leave it overnight so that in the morning the cup will be full of snails because they'll be they'll be trying to eat that little piece of fruit in the cup and uh, then you just take the cup out and throw it away so that's one way to control uh, your snail populations um, as, as somebody's mentioning in the uh, chat you can also use um, fish eating invertebrates or uh, <laughs> did I say fish eating snail eating invertebrates or uh, fish um, uh, clown loaches will eat snails those fish do actually get really big though so you have to make sure you can uh, keep a fish that big in your tank you know depending on what size uh, but yeah assassin snails uh, eat uh, other snails or cannibals <laughs> so um, either two of those methods I, I would recommend so uh, you can use snail eating fish or the cup and fruit method thing so uh can i grow java ferns with goldfish absolutely yeah um java fern um sword plants anubias those are really great plants to, to grow with goldfish because they're so um they're so tough you know they're really really tough plants they're really hard to break apart so you know, goldfish really like to peck at everything in their in in an aquarium. Uh, so those plants are too hard for them to tear apart. So yeah, you can definitely do that. Um, I'd really recommend anubias though, because anubias uh, is like perfect to you know grow with goldfish because they're like one of the the hardiest plants out there. They're like built like a tank. So. Can you help me? I have a 36 gallon tank with a common pleco. Every plant I put in, he eats. What plant is very harder to survive? I have substrate and okay lights. I just try, try Anubias. That that'd be a great plant with a with a pleco. So really, really hard for them to tear those apart. I had a 10 gallon tank when I was 12, just a normal tropical tank, but I bought three silver dollars, not realizing they get huge, and two died. Now five years later. I still have one and it's in a 60 with a school. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. just just as you heard me talking about my uh, Tiger Oscar I used to have, I made the same mistake when I was young. So I think we all do, you know, because it's just we're, we're inexperienced and we're, we're just so excited to get into the hobby. So normal. Jacob, I have a 120 gallon planted tank with no CO2, only Denerol, power tabs. Uh, which plants can I keep? <clears throat> Um, you know, instead of me recommending a bunch of plants and trying to remember all of them, <laughs> um, if you go to my website, uh, jacobsaquarium.com, I have all my plants on there that I sell and they all have the, uh, their, their care requirements listed right next to them. So on each uh, product page, so you can see which plants, uh, are go great or grow great without, uh, CO2 and stuff. So, uh, just check out my website because it's becoming kind of irritating having to recommend plants <laughs> and trying to remember them all so because uh, there's so many and I, I can't remember them all so it's better just to visit my website and you can see all of them that will do fine in the tank without co2 what's the best floating plant um you know i really don't um i don't really grow floating plants um, but I know there are several that I do have that can grow, uh, floating. Um, I know Anubias is one of those plants for sure. Um, uh, duckweed, the herpes of the planted tank world. <laughs> uh, but I wouldn't recommend that plant. Um, yeah, I mean, the only one I can think about is Anubias. I can't really think about anything else because I don't really grow uh, floating plants. So, Do you have any reptiles? No, I do not, but I would love to have a snake. 
I would love a snake because I think snakes are really cool, but I don't have any time. I, I just do not have time for anything, anything like that, any real pets right now. I definitely have time for a planet tank, though. <laughs> just not anything else too demanding. <laughs> Is your nursery open in the rain? No, today I, I closed early because it's pouring over here. So um, there's no way you could shop in peace at my nursery right now. It's like a there's major thunderstorms going on right now in California uh, over in the area where my nursery is especially because we get really bad weather out there for some reason. I don't know why. Um, so I closed early today. So sorry, but I'll be open tomorrow. Tomorrow is uh <clears throat> tomorrow is Friday, so yeah, be open tomorrow. Normal business hours, as long as uh, weather permitting, of course. You know, Jacob, do you like koi, koi betas? Um, I really don't. I really haven't had betas um, throughout my fish tank. Um, I'm trying to think, have I? I think I had one. That was a long time ago, though, when I was a kid. Uh, but no, I don't know too much about betas, but I think betas are actually really pretty. There's a lot of really, really pretty beta fish. So, uh, how's your nursery doing? Very, very good. Very, very good. I love it. Every, every day, every day I go there, I am just so happy that I have a place that I can do whatever I want with because, you know, before I had the nursery, I was doing everything out of my apartment and it was just hell trying to do that because, you know, operating a planted or aquatic plant business out of an apartment was, it was a nightmare. Um, and especially all the regulations and stuff and restrictions, uh, my apartment manager was so strict on me. She was like, you can't have this. You can't have more than one tank. You can't have a tank bigger than 50 gallons. And, uh, you know, it was so frustrating. So now that I have the nursery, and um, I have over an acre of land to do whatever I want with. I'm just like, yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I can finally do whatever I want. And so, yeah, nursery is doing great. I love it. Every day I, I get there, I'm so happy. And I love my pond and my fish in my pond. I feed them every day. And uh, they'll actually eat from my hand, too. So they've, they've kind of grown to like me. Um, so... It's just really nice. I just really, I'm just so glad I have the nursery. I really am. So, is the nursery a good business? Um, if you rely completely on local traffic, not really. Because if you have a nursery, um, you know, you'd want to have it ideally in California or Florida, you know, because we get the best weather out of the whole country pretty much. Um, anywhere else, it's, it'd be really hard to turn a profit because, you know, other parts of the country get really bad snow, really bad rain. Um, <clears throat> so it'd be really hard to operate an outdoor business in, in other parts of the country. But in California or Florida, it's, it's, it's okay. But when the winter time comes, don't expect to make a lot of money. And you, you better have saved a lot of money from your sales during the summer so that you can continue to pay your bills throughout the winter because uh, nurse, the nursery business during the winter time is really, really slow. Uh, you'll get, you know, pretty much no customers, <laughs> you know, so you have to rely on something else. Um, as for me though, see, I sell mostly on the internet. I don't rely completely on people coming into my nursery off the street or locally, you know, to buy stuff from me. So I'm not really too concerned about the winter time when the winter actually comes, I'm actually really happy. <laughs> believe it or not because it's 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 funny because like you know during the summertime uh people are on vacation they're out doing things you know they're not really inside their homes uh dealing with their aquariums or pets you know they're they're outside doing stuff but during the winter time people are inside more so they want to work on their tanks they want to rescape their tanks they want to start a new tank because they're bored they want something to do you know rather than sit around and watch tv all day probably um because there's nothing to do outside because the weather is crappy um so the winter time for my business is 
amazing. I get more business during the winter time than I ever will during the summertime. Um, in fact, today, I think I, I beat my record of the amount of orders I've gotten in one day. I think today I got about uh, 70, I think I got 72, 72, I have to check my phone. Where's my phone? Oh, crap. Damn it. My phone is somewhere else. I can't check my orders, but <laughs> I think today I actually beat my record for the amount of orders I got in one day. I think I got about 72 today. So uh, the winter is great for for any online aquatic plant retailer because people are just buying plants like crazy because they're inside their homes most of the time and they want to rescape their tanks. So the winter time is the best time of the year for a business like mine. Uh, the summertime... I, you know, I still get a lot of orders, but nothing compared to the winter time. So uh, the winter time is really crucial for, for me because it's the time where I really try to save as much money as possible so that when summer comes around and, and my orders start to, you know, go down, I don't really get a lot. I still have um, I still have some money to pay the bills, you know, and stay in business. Uh, so the winter time is like really it's it can get stressful at sometimes because the amount of packages that have to go out. Um, but it's it's and and having to save money and stuff but it's uh, it's really great i i love the winter time for you know it's just great i'm so busy though <laughs> uh 72 or okay martin says 72 packaged in one day or received in one day so i received 72 orders today not packages yeah um Hey, love your videos. Do you ship to Australia? Unfortunately, I don't. I really wish I could, though. Listening to your stream while editing. Cool. <laughs> hey, Jacob, do you perhaps know how to grow Hygrophilia pinatifida? I do, and I will tell you that it's a really, really difficult plant to grow, um, especially if you are transitioning it from uh, immersed grown um, pinatifida to uh, submerged grown. I actually had to stop selling it on my website because it is one of the the most difficult plants to transition from uh, immersed to submerged growth. Um, for those of you that don't know, pretty much a lot of the plants that you know most retailers sell on the internet, they're grown immersed, which means out of water, because the nurseries that you know the huge nurseries you know in in Florida um, in particular. Uh, that a lot of the pet stores and stuff in in the United States get their their plants from uh, They all grow their plants immersed out of the water because they grow faster uh, They don't have to worry about algae or anything else. So they grow them immersed. So um, But a lot of mine are I had that I sell are actually grown um, submerged because they spend a, a while in my pond before they're finally, you know sold so uh, they, they have a time to transition um and I already have some that have been growing in there already, and I just take cuttings from. But that plant, Hygrophilia pinatifida, I I got almost always immersed grown or in its immersed state. So um, I started, you know, as I was selling it, I started getting emails from my customers saying, "Hey, you know, this plant, it, I've ordered it from you like three times, and it dies every time. What is going on?" You know, and so I'm like, "Okay, you know what." I'm not selling this plant anymore. I, I'm going to have to grow this myself, transition it from immersed to submerged growth so that I don't have any more problems because that was the biggest issue was um, just transitioning it from immersed to submerged. So I stopped selling it and I'm currently trying to grow it out now um, in its submerged state so that I can offer my customers a more stable product, something that you know is already transitioned, they don't have to worry about and they can throw in their tank and it'll grow. Um, but yeah, so in regards to that plant, as far as, as far as it, as far as, uh, transitioning it from immersed to submerged growth, very, very difficult. I, I lost pretty much almost all of the, the cuttings that I got from, from, uh, my distributor, um, besides like maybe one bundle <laughs> that survived and transitioned. So it's a really hard plant to transition. Um, as far as temperature, I would say that it likes, you know, 70, 75 degrees. It loves CO2, it loves nutrients, and it loves highlights. So 
it's it's a more demanding plant uh, for sure. So that's just a little bit about it, you know, for the person that asked. So would plants even survive being shipped internationally? I I don't think so. No, um, they'd probably survive if if you ship them overnight internationally, which I don't I don't know if they offer that, but um, you know it, it's shipping plants internationally. First of all, is difficult because the import and export regulations you have to go through just to get them out of the country and into the country you're trying to ship them into and then also the length of time the plants will ship or will spend in shipping um, if you're shipping them internationally you definitely want to ship them the quickest you know service possible um, and you know so that they'll survive and still it's not a guarantee they'll survive because being shipped internationally they're going to be exposed to so many different temperatures uh, no matter how how well they're packed or insulated or insulated the packages it's still risky um so that and then also the the price of shipping plants internationally is astronomical okay um i think one time i was curious you know how much it would actually cost and i i put in like i think i was trying to ship it to like i think singapore or japan or something um so i put in a Japan address and I put my address and I think for UPS um, overnight or one day international or something like that I did this a long time ago so it's hard to remember but I, I believe it was like like hundred and eighty dollars to, to ship a one pound box of plants to another country so I mean the the cost of that is no, nobody's gonna want to pay that much to have plants shipped to them so it's just like I would offer international shipping, but for one, it's it, it's risky, you know, because what the plants have to go through just to get there, uh, the cost is way too much, and most people don't want to pay that. And um, and there's one other other thing. Oh yeah, the import and export regulations. It'd be so hard to even get the plants into the country without you know customs or whatever, um, you know, denying them and basically destroying the package, and then you know, I'll lose a lot of money. So I love to ship plants internationally, but it is just, there's so too much to go through and it's too expensive and it's just not worth it. So unfortunately I, I can't, you know, but I'd really love to, it, it would be nice. So do you grow banana plants? Um, yes, I do. Actually, I had like 12 of them in the pond, but I sold them all. So I'm getting more though on Saturday. So I'll have more then. So uh, where did you grow up? I grew up in, uh, well, I was born in Riverside, California, um, but I grew up mostly in Orange County, um, California. So, and then I moved around a lot when I was younger and it was a whole other story. So, but yeah, I grew up mostly in, in Orange County, California, in particular, Anaheim, California. Uh, would you recommend getting my pH that is 7.6 down to 7.0 using things like a pH buffer? Um, yeah, definitely. Plants typically like a pH between 6.0 and 6.5. So 7.6 or even 7.0 is way too high. So yeah, you definitely want to bring that down. Um, and you know, you can use things like uh, pH up or pH down. Uh, that's a, a chemical product made by API. There's also another product made by Fitz Aquatics called a pH uh, adjuster or something like that. You can use that. Um, that's actually what I've used. So, okay. Just a reminder, guys. Um, I I hate to say this and sound like a a, a prude here, but uh, please don't advertise any websites or anything in the chat. Um, I'm sure you can understand why I I would not like that. So just don't do that, okay? Uh, did you go to Disneyland a lot when you were little? <laughs> yeah, believe it or not, a lot of people uh, think that you know Californians like are at Disneyland every every day, <laughs> every weekend, because uh, it's so close. But yeah, I mean, I actually lived just down the street from Disneyland. I I could see the fireworks uh, every night that they did during the summertime. Uh, but actually, no, I I probably have been to Disneyland um, I think twice in my life. <laughs> And it's literally 30 miles away from here, so it's not really that far. Um, but yeah, I, I have not been there that, that often. So, 
Which plants do good in a higher pH? Um, I would say Rotalawa lychee does really good in, in, in a high pH aquarium. Um, other than that, I, I, I don't know of too many plants that like a, a high pH. I'm not really, um, I really don't know, so. Uh, all fair weight, 7.6 is too high. What about for hardy plants like Java fern and Nubius? Um, I've never grown Java fern or Nubius in a high pH aquarium, so I can't say for sure. So, good plants for temperatures above 82 degrees. Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, yeah, that's tough. You know, uh, most plants don't like really high temperatures like that. Um, hmm. I honestly can't think of anything right now. Uh, maybe somebody in the chat has grown some plants in a high temp tank that has some ideas, but as far as me, I, I, I really don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> no recommendations for you there. <laughs> I've been like 10 times. I live in Canada. <laughs> been Disneyland 10 times. That's funny. Yeah, way more than me, and I'm in California. <laughs> Have you ever thought about keeping other animals at your nursery, like uh, birds? How much work you, on your hands? Yeah, uh, Benny Vivo. Actually, um, it's funny you say that because I actually, this summer, I'm going to be building a um, a an aviary type thing. And I actually want to raise uh, finches at my nursery too. Uh, because, I mean, that's kind of another side of, you know, of my hobbies, I actually really like birds too. Um, and now that I have the space, you know, I can definitely do that. So, uh, or definitely, you know, keep a lot of birds if I wanted to. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I have plans to build an aviary, um, this summer at the nursery. I'm just trying to work out where to put it and, um, you know, the best way to build it because I, I have to consider, you know, there's a lot of critters out there where, where my nursery is. Um, we Where there's uh, coyotes, raccoons, so they'll definitely eat the birds for sure. So I have to make sure it's built, the aviary is built very well. Um, but yeah, the, it's funny you say that because actually that's, that's one of my plans for uh, this coming summer is to build an aviary for uh, finches. And, and maybe some other birds, but... Uh, finches are really like the only ones that can do great um, outdoors. I mean, anything else like any other type of parrots, they really like warmer temperatures, so it's kind of uh, risky to have those birds out there. So, my tank goes up to 82 in the summer, and I have Anubias and Swords and Water Wisteria. They do fine. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I guess those plants will do good in a uh, in a warm tank. I mean, for me, you know, during the summertime at the nursery, um, when I was using my two eighty gallon tanks at the, at the time, the water in there, I I think it got up to about eighty five at one point when it got really really hot in the uh, in the greenhouse, um, and the, the plants did fine. I, I didn't notice any melting at all, but you know, it wasn't a constant temperature of eighty five degrees in the tanks because. Um, at night, the tanks would cool down to, uh, you know, around the 60s, 70 degree temperature range. Uh, so in an aquarium, you know, since you, you're obviously using a heater, the temperatures are more stable at, um, at that. So, I mean, it's just, it's, I don't know, it's kind of risky to grow plants in a really hot tank. But if Anubia swords and water stereo work for you in a hot tank uh, or in 82 degree tank, uh, I'd say definitely. Try those out for sure. In Australia, it's always hot. <laughs> That's what I've heard. <laughs> it's too damn hot in Australia. <laughs> so, all right, guys. I'm only going to be live for an hour today because um, I got some uh, stuff to do. I, I, I want to set up my new camera, and uh, I got some website managing to do. So... Uh, we have about four minutes left of the live stream before I'm going to say goodbye for today. So uh, if you have any questions, get them in right now, okay? Uh, 
Camille Nasser Guri, I'm just curious, Jacob, have you ever kept predatory large fish like Amazonian fishes, arowanas, rays, etc.? I actually did. I had a 80 gallon tank uh, back in the day that I had a silver arowana in. Unfortunately, I, I moved and uh, had to give it away, but um, I had an arowana, a silver arowana. I also had a tiger Oscar. That was a really large fish, got really big. Um, but I have. I've had those two only as far as large predatory fish. Um, I haven't had any rays, but I would love to keep a, a freshwater stingray because there are some that are really beautiful. And I really like the color of some of them. So I have an established 55 gallon tank with eco complete. I have a spare bag of ADA Amazonia. Can I add that on top with the fish in there? Uh, you can definitely do that, but you'd probably make a big mess of your tank uh, if you did add the ADA soil um, with your tank filled up with water. <laughs> I know there are ways to add substrate into a planted tank without making too much of a mess. Um, I, I believe there's a method like uh, you can get a PVC pipe and put that in your in your tank and obviously put it all the way down to the bottom of the tank and then throw substrate in the pipe and it'll go down into the pipe and into your aquarium and it won't really be moved around a lot so it won't make a big mess but even still um, I think you'd still make a big mess <laughs> just throwing ADA soil in there uh, really the only way or the, the only um, uh, yeah the only way that I'd recommend you add the ADA so soil into your tank is by completely draining it so that there's no water in there at all and putting the soil on top um, I think it would not be a good idea to add the soil with your tank already full with water um, but you know do that at your own risk because when you completely empty a tank of all the water you could risk the the tank recycling uh, which can obviously kill your fish so you got to be careful with that but i yeah i wouldn't recommend doing it filled with water <laughs> um should i start off with a new planet tank with co2 or add it later I always recommend if you can afford a CO2 system and you know use it from the start, do it because you cannot go wrong with using CO2. Uh, CO2 is really beneficial to a planet tank, so if you, you can afford it, you can afford the CO2 system because I know a lot of that stuff is really costly, the tank, the regulator, you know, but still if you can afford it, do it, you know, because you can't go wrong. It can be beneficial to any plant. So. Uh, intake and outlet position of a cash filter on a planet tank. Um, the intake I would recommend to be on one side of the tank and the outtake be on the other side. And the outtake, I'd recommend that it's nothing that is moving the surface of the water around too much because if you're doing that, if you're if you're moving if you're moving around the water too much, you know, splashing and everything at the top of your aquarium. You're introducing a lot of oxygen, and if you're injecting CO2, you can deplete your CO2 levels that way. So um, it, it depends, you know, but yeah, that's what I'd recommend. Can I put moss, a moss plant for my beta? Yeah, betas will do fine with moss. Um, uh, okay, thank you, Kamal. Kam uh, Kam thank you for watching the live stream. Uh, Take a little bit to three years. One year's fine. I was wondering if I should wait till the plants have established roots, etc. Um, sure. <laughs> How much money has everyone spent in the in this hobby? <laughs> uh, a lot. <laughs> a good live stream. Thanks for answering my questions. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Benny. Thank you. All right, guys. Well. That's going to do it for today's live stream. I'd like to thank you all for watching the stream today. Stay tuned for some awesome videos with Wysoni Action Camera. I uh, hope everybody is doing good. hope your tanks are doing good. And I will see you soon in another live stream, everybody. Okay, so take care. Uh, thanks for watching my videos on my channel. And thanks for watching the live stream. And uh, I will see you guys next time, okay? Bye, everybody.